Hi everyone, welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Shay Dorena. Whenever you leave your house, make sure you say I love you to your family because it might be the last time you see them. Geez, that's a dark way to start this video, but it's kind of a warning to always have your head on a swivel, baby. You never know what's gonna happen. There are weird people out there that might try to snatch you up for no reason. I mean, especially if you're someone like me. I think I would be high on someone's kidnap list. This hair alone probably would go for like a million dollars. I'm not sure if it's worth that much, but that's just an estimation. But just to freak you out even more and bring you today's list of top 10 mysterious disappearances we will never solve. You're gonna wanna stick around for the final four on the list because I've got some that are going to blow your mind. As always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Also, follow Most Amazing Top 10 on Instagram and Facebook. It's a great way to get to know myself and all the other hosts just a little bit better. And without taking any longer, let's get into this list. At number 10 we have Felix Moncla. Alright, we're going to be combining a few things on this list. We're going to have stuff here that will make you afraid to leave your door unlocked, and we have stuff that will have you running around with a tinfoil hat on, scared that aliens will stick cameras up your butt and put your brain in your dog's body. This one is a super eerie case. It's 1953 and some military radar picks up an unknown blip. It seems to be something that's just hovering. It's right over Lake Superior in Michigan and the military wants some info about what this thing is so they send out Felix. It might be a hidden attack from some leftover Nazis, who knows. Felix got into his fighter jet, sped off to figure out what this thing was. The people in the base were watching the two little markers get closer and closer and closer until it was right over the one at Lake Superior. Then it seemed like they collided and just disappeared. The official report was that he crashed into an enemy plane. But there was no signs of a crash, no wreckage, nothing. How do two planes crash into each other and there's no debris? Maybe Felix went right into a wormhole into another dimension. Or he was snatched up by aliens and they're putting cameras in his butt and switching his brain with his dog's brain. Who knows? At number 9 we have Brandon Swanson. Brandon was driving home late one night in Minnesota. He might have been drinking or maybe he just wasn't really paying attention to where he was going but he ended up in a ditch. His loving mother and father left to go grab him but he wasn't where he said he would be. So they searched for him for hours. This entire time they were talking on the phone with him. While talking on the phone with him, his father heard him yell out, oh shit, and then the phone just went dead. His car was found 25 miles away from where he said it was. A 500 person search party was sent out, but he was never found. At number eight, we have Garnell Moore. This one is a really sad story. Garnell was a young boy with no real family. He was passed around from family member to family member, each taking turns to take care of him. One day he was just gone. People started asking questions which brought the police into the picture. After a bit of investigating, it turns out that the last person who was taking care of Garnell was his aunt. She told the police that she couldn't take care of him anymore so she left him on the steps of a child services building. But when the police went to check the place out, it didn't exist. But there was no evidence linking the aunt to the disappearance of Garnell. And the other family members didn't have any explanation of where he might have gone. So was the whole family just keeping one giant secret? We'll never know. Unless someone comes forward, then we'll totally know. At number 7 we have Henry Avery. Let's move on to a happier story. This one is about one of the most bad dudes who ever lived. Henry Avery was known as King of the Pirates. This dude probably drank more rum and spread more chlamydia than six Charlie Sheens taped together. Between the years of 1694 and 1696, this dude was notorious and took down over five different ships for everything they were worth. His biggest get was the Ganyi Sowie. Him and his crew of dirty, scurvy, written debauchees took over this boat, and what they found wasn't just a bunch of fruit and booze, but 600,000 pounds worth of gold and silver. This guy literally won the pirate lottery. If we do a little conversion on this bad boy, the take was worth 52 million dollars. Actually, over 52 million dollars. This guy was now the biggest baller in town. He was the most loaded pirate who had ever lived. He split his money with the rest of his crew and then disappeared. No one ever saw this badass again. He was lost to the world and probably became a king somewhere and died from having too much sex. At number 6 we have Virginia Carpenter. I want you all to picture it. It's 1948. Everything's in black and white. People are wearing long trench coats and everyone always has a cigarette. Virginia was dropped off by a cabbie but never made it home. She was spotted talking to two men in a car. Over the next few days there were people who claimed they had seen her all over the city in that car with those two men. The last sighting was a hitchhiker who claimed that she was Virginia, but after that, 
She was gone for good. Number 5. Brianna Maitland This one is super strange. Brianna was only 17 years old when her and her mother went out shopping. At one point Brianna left the store to go talk to her friend outside. When her mother finally caught up with her, Brianna seemed stressed out and she was acting strange. The following night Brianna left work early and just vanished. The part of this story that is so weird is her car was found next to an abandoned house. In the front seat was her paycheck and her purse, but it seemed that she had drove there on her own free will. There was no sign of a struggle. And number 4 we have Karina Sagers and Annette Sagers. This case definitely left a couple of boys and their father with some emotional scarring. In the early 80s, Karina Sanders, mother of three, just went missing out of nowhere. One minute she was waiting at a bus stop, and the next she was gone. Karina's family was pretty broken by this, but then in 1988, the Sagers' youngest kid, Annette Sagers, went missing from the same bus stop. Okay, hold on. How are you gonna let any of your family go back to the bus stop after one of you goes missing there? That's an accident waiting to happen. Here's where the story gets really messed up. There was a note left at the bus stop that said, Mommy came back, please give the boys a hug. What's even crazier is that the note was in Karina's handwriting. Are you serious? She came back to get her daughter but left her sons? Dude, this is gonna leave the kids with trauma over level 9000. At number 3 we have Jacob Wetterling. This is a pretty standard story of kids hanging out and having fun. Jacob and his buddies were riding around on their bikes, checking out the town, they went to rent a movie, some pretty standard kid stuff. On their way back home, Jacob and his friends were stopped by a man holding a shotgun. Never a good turn of events. The guy told them to get off their bikes and then took each one of their bikes and threw them into a ditch one by one. After which he started to interrogate the kids at gunpoint. Eventually he asked them all their ages. After this he told Jacob's friends to run into the forest and not look back or he would kill them. The last time anyone saw Jacob was when he was being pulled by the man into a strange house. After that, the man and Jacob were never found again. At number 2 we have Amy Bradley. Another situation of people trying to enjoy themselves and all their fun gets torn down before they can sip back their first ice cold margarita. Amy Bradley was on a cruise with her parents. She was getting day drunk probably, hanging out, having a good time, eating food, laying in the sun, all that standard stuff. But one day she was gone. Everyone was checking for her all over the boat. They were checking for her everywhere to see if she fell overboard. No one could find anything. The boat then docked in Curacao and a huge search party went out, but they couldn't find a single sign. Years later, a picture was sent to Amy's parents. It was someone who looked a lot like their daughter, but there was no information on the picture. And years after that, a sailor said he had spoke to Amy in a Curacao brothel. She might have been kidnapped on the boat and then sold into sex slavery on the island. And in the number one spot, we have Joan Gay Croft. In 1947, a massive tornado swept through middle America. It was knocking the hell out of everyone's home and killed over 100 people. One of these people was Joan's mother. Joan's father managed to survive, but he was severely injured. Joan and her family members were brought to a local hospital, and Joan and her brother were told to stay in the basement. Just in case another tornado came through town, this would be the safest place to be. It wasn't long after the family got settled into the hospital that two men in army uniforms arrived. They were searching for Joan. The hospital staff complied with the men even though they had no idea who these two men were. Joan left with them and then she was gone forever. She was only 4 years old when this happened. Alright everyone, that is our list. I hope you all enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Now that we're at the end of the video, if you haven't already, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. And comments are key, guys. They really let me know what you thought of the video and will help me improve future videos. Also, if you're craving more Most Amazing Top 10 content, be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. There is so much more content over there for you guys. Until next time, I've been Shade Arena, and if you never see me again, name a taco stand after me. It's how I would like to be remembered. <laughs> <laughs>